Bye bye. Hey folks, welcome to a lunchtime afternoon here in the middle of Bang Sen. Just going to go up here to a little place and get something to eat. But yesterday I rode my scooter into Padia and I sold it to a guy, a guy who was just getting in the country and needed some wheels. And I hadn't been using it as much uh, lately and I thought it might be time for something different. So uh, since I sold it now, we'll take a look at that and, and then we'll break down what it costs to to own and, and uh, operate that, that scooter for, I had it a little over 15 months, so we'll look at all the costs associated with it, fuel everything, and we'll get a kind of a monthly average and see what that really costs. I'm just going to come in here and get something neat. I like this place. A lot, a lot of different things to choose from here. So since that one is sold now, then that'll kind of trigger the process of getting something different. So we'll... Uh, We'll see how that goes, and I'll talk a little bit about that and show you some of the process uh, that I use to get, get a bike. But let's go back to yesterday first and look at the uh, sale. It's about 9 o'clock. Just made it into, into town today. I'm going to sell my scooter. So I rode in, and... Uh, I'm going to meet the gentleman around 10 o'clock in Jerome Pien. But uh, before I do that, I figured I'd wash it up so he gets a nice clean ride. So. Get it all cleaned up for him. Wash the dust off of it. And then I'll go sell it. And then I'm on foot. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll just uh, jump on the bot bus and jump the end back to Central Patia and take the van back to Bangsa. And that will be a day. <laughs> so, whenever you buy or sell a, a motor vehicle, motorcycle, you, you, there's a couple things you have to have. And as the seller, I provided these things to the to the buyer. So the first thing would be the green book. The green book would be like your title, uh, your title document for the vehicle. And each page uh, is a different page for each consecutive owner. Since I bought this new, I was the first owner. There's only one page uh, of owner information filled out. I just sign that, give it off to the new buyer. And when he re-registers it, there'll be a new page um, in that green book with his information and it'll indicate that he is now the owner. Along with that, uh, you always want to make sure you get a copy of the ID. If it's a Thai person you're buying from, their Thai ID card is fine. A signed copy of that, and along with their phone number. If, the, if it's an expat, then probably their passport is which, what they're looking for. A copy of the passport and their phone number, and they have to sign that copy. And um, then the, the new buyer can go into, oh, and you need a bill of sale, some kind of receipt, either a receipt from the shop or a bill of sale from the uh, seller. And you can go into an agent, or I prefer to use one of the inspection shops. They charge a lot less. Um, these agents that are set up just for solely for foreigners charge an outrageous amount, in my opinion. I paid maybe two, 300 baht for a service charge using a, a uh, shop. So, I guess it's time to say goodbye to little red scooter. It's been almost, almost 9,000 kilometers. It's been a good little ride, never a minute's trouble. Did everything I asked and then a little bit more. So uh, I'm sure the next owner will be happy with it and uh, get as much if not more use out of it than I did. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's it. No more scooter. A little bit sad, but it's got a it's got a good owner. Bye bye.
So wouldn't you know it, lunch has arrived. I got a little lime drink there. It costs 20 baht. And this Penang, ga, uh, Penang Mu, actually, so it's pork uh, and a Penang sauce. That was 50 baht. So yeah, 70 baht here. There's, there's my change. But this is, this is one of my favorites. I love a good Penang. And they were out of chicken. I usually get the chicken here. Uh, they, were, they were out of chicken today, so I got pork. Pork's 10 baht more, but uh, anyway. So since the scooter is sold, uh, while I enjoy my meal here, let's start talking about the, the costs. So the way I'm gonna break this down for you is I owned it for about 15 months, just a little over 15 months, and I'm gonna list all the expenses, um, what it cost brand new, Again, I had a, I had a 2018 uh, Yamaha Aerox 155. I bought it brand new at a Yamaha dealer. Um, they registered it for the first year. They insured it for the first year. A lot of stuff came with it. But I did have to get a subsequent registration for the next year. I, like I said, I owned it over a year. And I had fuel. I had uh, maintenance costs. And I, I did more maintenance than was really required. I. I probably did an extra, uh, probably two extra oil changes, um, just to make sure, sure everything's kind of copacetic. And on top of that, I did have a repair. I came out, uh, came out, got to my bike one day in the Big C parking garage, and somebody had, I don't know what somebody did, but one of my mirrors was hanging. So I ordered a, a brand new set of mirrors, aftermarket mirrors. That was a uh, 300 baht. But we'll go through all that. I did have a warranty, uh, but. If something breaks, like the mirror incident, that's not going to be covered under warranty. Um, so I'm going to list out all of these uh, costs that were associated, and then we'll divide that by the amount of time, and we'll see what it costs per month, and we'll look at that in baht in U.S. dollars, and then we'll break it down even to the kilometer. I drove it, uh, I think it was 8,730 kilometers, and we'll see what it actually costs per kilometer for fuel, insurance, reg, maintenance, depreciation, everything so uh, let's go ahead and get into that all right so I'm just going to kind of do this on a whiteboard thing here to make it as clear I don't know how to make it any clearer but the uh, brand new scooter 15 months of ownership and the cost this is what I paid for it brand new 63,000 baht uh, the subsequent registration insurance that I got for the following year was 850 baht repairs as for the mirror incident 300 baht fuel at an average of 90 per week. I use that figure. Some weeks I get 80, some weeks 100. I just did 90. I had it for 66 weeks, and that comes out to 5,040 baht. Maintenance, I got four different maintenance uh, jobs done, 200 for the first two, and then a 300, then a 400. You need different things or different fluids along the way. That's 1,100. And then I sold it for 48,000. So we'll subtract the 48,000 once we add up all of the... Uh, all of the costs. We'll do the costs first, add all those up, and then we'll subtract what we sold it for, and the remainder will be our total cost, and then we'll go ahead and derive the averages down there. So 63 and 850, let's just add up all these costs up top there, and the grand total is 70,290. We'll subtract the 48,000, we get 22,290 baht. So if we divide that by, it was actually 15 and a half months I had. Let's do 15 and a half months. And we'll divide that up and we'll get 1,438 baht per month. And if we transfer that into US dollars, I'm just going to use 31.5 for the exchange rate. It's 45 US dollars and 65 cents per month was the total cost. And if we figure that for kilometers, we'll just divide our total cost by the amount of kilometers. About two and a half baht per kilometer. And there again, if we transfer that into uh, the U.S. dollar rate, you're looking at right around eight cents per kilometer. So that's that's your operating cost. That's your cost of ownership, depreciation, all that stuff. And just for our kind of giggles here, we'll we'll do a rental comparison. I think around thirty-five hundred a month would be a kind of an average median point for a rental of a bike like that for a, a new unit. And, of course, you still have to put the fuel in. The, the maintenance, repairs, all the other stuff you probably wouldn't have to put in. The registration insurance, you wouldn't have to pay that. But we'll add that up. So with the uh, rental uh, fee, I guess you call it, and the, and the fuel, your cost to uh, do that would be 3,836 baht per month or $121 
per month. So almost, almost in the neighborhood of three times as much um, renting. Now, just kind of extrapolate that out to how many months you want to rent. Uh, but I think renting is, is probably not a good long-term option. A lot of people ask about renting. Renting's more designed for a short term, a couple weeks, maybe a month. But I've seen people rent uh, scooters for months on end, uh, almost perpetually. And in the long term, I think you come out much better buying. Now, depending on the uh, unit you buy, the type of scooter, your depreciation is going to be different. I figure around 23, 24% a year. So the more expensive the unit, the more depreciation is going to be. But the cheaper the unit, the less it's going to be. You can also uh, mitigate that by buying a used unit. Used unit, uh, maybe you'll get a lot less depreciation. So everybody's numbers are going to be different. I'll show you how I look at some used units here. There's a couple ways online. The, the first, I use this Facebook Marketplace. Um, and you can search a radius from your home or, or wherever you are. And hey, this, this is funny. This is actually uh, this is the first scooter I ever bought in Thailand. A 1992 Nova RS. Bought it brand new in 1992. 46,000 baht. A little two, two, two stroke. Uh, I think about 110 cc. Actually quite a legendary bike for young, young Thais. Love that, uh, love that bike nowadays. But anyway, you, you can see a whole whole variety of different things you can buy big bikes scooters all sorts and I've actually um, actually done a lot of searching on there and continue to for my next for my next project here but uh, you know this one this guy here he's even got this is really basic cheap transportation here this guy's even got his uh, a picture of, of the document so there's a green book and there's a transfer document. He's all ready to sell this. Uh, th those are the things you want uh, from a seller. So another one is bot sold, and bot sold's okay as well. And this is all of Thailand. <clears throat> it seems like they all. It seems like you get all of them to come up or nothing. So you might be looking at if you're in Bangkok, you may be looking at things that are for sale in Chiang Mai or Phuket or wherever. But they they've got a lot of offerings on here. The other thing I find with this one is it seems like it may not be updated as regularly. I, I find things that are no longer uh, for sale, even though they say they're for sale here. So I'm not sure about that. Your mileage may vary. And then of course there's Craigslist. Um, I found some scams on Craigslist. I'm not saying they're all scams. Um, you, there's honest deals on here as well. You just have to be a little careful. This guy's got like a Mad Max thing going on with this Vulcan here. Kind of looks neat. But um, you can find a a lot of you can find expats selling these as well as ties. Uh, so Craigslist is another another one to use, and there are others as well, different forums and things like that. But uh, you can do a lot of shopping online before you ever go out. And I'm going to go out today and just look at some things. I have a whole process when I when I go to buy something new, and I like to look at a lot of different things, get a lot of different prices, a lot of different ideas. And in that process, I kind of narrow down what I want how much I want to pay, uh, what kind of deal, how much I should be paying, things like that. So I'm going to go over here to a dealership I haven't been to. It's a Suzuki dealership. Yeah, so these bikes, um, they, these are kind of neat, actually. They've got a great big comfortable seat. They're called a Van Van, the Suzuki Van Van, 200cc. And it's kind of old schoolish. Um, they're they're basic, not a lot of modern technology or anything, but big beefy tires. But for 139,000 baht, I think that's overpriced for what you get. Um, here again, it's kind of a a bike from the well, I don't know, maybe the early 80s or something is what it reminds me of. Single cylinder, uh, but a nice bike for Thailand with those big meat, meaty tires, a lot of suspension travel comfortable seat. If that was more in the 90 to 100,000 baht range, I might consider it. Um, this bike over here, I had never seen before. It's a GSXS. It's 150 cc. And this is supposed to be like the uh, kind of the reigning king of uh, the 150 cc bikes between the GSXS and the GXSR in terms of, uh, I guess, power and speed. This, this this thing will do like 150 kilometers an hour, which is a lot for a little 150 cc machine. And the price on this thing kind of piqued my interest, 78,000 baht. Now, 
On the other hand, I think this one, as, com as compared to the other one we just looked at, I think that's a lot of bike for the money. Um, comes in a couple different colors, but the seat was real hard. You can always get that repadded or, or reupholstered or whatever. But, um, you know, just space to go in and kick some tires and look around and see what's what. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just uh, make the rounds, go to a couple different dealers, look at a, as many different things I can look at just to kind of um, get a feel for the, the market and any new offerings there may, they, that they may have and things I like, things I don't like. You discover those along the way. And I think that helps make a, at least for me anyway, it helps me make a more informed uh, buying decision. And it also kind of I go into it with an open mind and uh, it just to see, just to learn, you know, just to learn what else is out there and the benefits and features. So I kind of think I want something a little older, uh, maybe a used unit and fix it up and customize it a little bit, but we'll see. But anyway, I'm going to leave this off right here as I look at these bikes. And uh, as always, I'll thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now. Oh, yeah.